Let's talk about concealed carry today and what to do, what not to do. You're printing that. No, you, I thought it was pretty low key. No, you got an AK in your pants. I mean, I can. Yeah, I can get it out though. You know. Let's talk about mistakes made while concealed carry and what not to do. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about concealed carry, maybe the firearms, maybe the holsters, maybe everything, maybe going big picture here and talking about the top five mistakes I think I notice uh, while concealed carrying. I've been concealed carrying a firearm for quite some time now. I first started carrying a gun as soon as I turned 18 in the state of North Carolina. You can do that with open carry and stuff. and. Uh, I don't exactly recommend open carrying, but we'll get to all that a little bit later. But five mistakes, five common mistakes I think are made when it comes to concealed carrying your firearm. And these are, they can be in order from greatest to not, or not greatest, or whatever I'm trying to say. They're not in any type of specific order. They're not ranked here. These are just things to keep in mind and from my experience. And my number five in this case is Physical fitness. Don't sleep on alternative means to a firearm, uh, like hand-to-hand -hand combat, like martial arts. I, I'd go out there and learn how to kick somebody's butt type of thing, mainly for defense, because you don't, at the end of the day, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, this is a last resort. If you can't deter a situation or subdue somebody that is an aggressor before getting to this, well, that means that the situation has evolved ultimately to a life or death situation and you have no other choice but to pull out your gun. Maybe your gun is actually pinned to your body, you can't get it out, you've lost it somehow, and now you need to resort to other means to get this aggressor or attacker off of you and away from you and maybe just uh, out of the fight. And well, hand-to-hand -hand combat and learning how to actually take control of somebody in that situation is a good thing. Maybe have a secondary, like a pocket knife or a secondary firearm altogether, right? Keeping that type of stuff on you is always good. And remember, the weapons are pretty much the last resort, that this situation's not gonna go anywhere other than me or somebody I care for getting harmed or killed. Well, now it's time to take out that threat. And that is what it is, and unfortunately, that's the world that we live in today. Evil exists, how are you gonna respond to it? Well, you should have an escalation of force just like what we're taught in the military. So, start verbal. Go hands-on if you have to. And then, at the end of it all, take it to a more lethal means, whatever that may be. That's my number five. Let's roll into my number four mistake that I think exists. My number four mistake that I see is the type of clothing you wear. For instance, to sit, today I decided to wear a tighter fitting shirt to show that this isn't concealed carrying. This is completely obvious that something's going on over here. Not too sure what it is, but uh, it's obviously something that's going to uh, be easily identifiable. So the type of clothing you wear is definitely going to either make you or break you when it comes to concealed carrying. The other thing you're gonna take into consideration is, uh, well, if you're not practicing with the type of clothing that you're wearing, you don't know if maybe the optics you have on your concealed carry gun, the attachments, whatever they might be, might get snagged up. Maybe wear something a little bit looser, maybe wear an overshirt even, and of course I'm talking about maybe from a male's perspective, but depending on how you dress, this could also go into a female application. Uh, look at it as, well, if I'm wearing like an overshirt, that might be a little bit easier. You can still carry something at a different position at the waistline. And depending on how you like to carry, some people would prefer to kind of open carry on the belt, but have a jacket over, so that way it's a little bit more comfortable, and then you won't be, it's, be able to tell that you're printing, or you won't be able to see that, you know, that print or you're just not gonna be printing. So clothing is definitely a big deal. And it also comes down to the type of belt. For instance, the belt that I'm wearing is actually for my, this is an inner belt for my outer belt uh, that I have from AWS Systems in conjunction with like my Alpha Omega holster and the Safari Land leg shroud and all that fun stuff. This isn't the ideal concealed carry belt, um, even though it is nice and stiff, but in this case, this is also the two inch wide one. Or, and it's, it's honestly just too big for most types of holsters out there. I also have a thinner inner belt, which will allow for most of your inside the waistband holsters to grab onto, as you can kind of see, like this guy grabs good, good amount of material from Alpha Omega, which prevents the holster coming out with the gun when you go to pull. Because the last thing you want is to kind of come up and be like, now I'm ready to go. Because anything you do, that's in addition to getting your gun on target is going to slow down uh, ultimately that reaction time, like not carrying one in the chamber, which we'll talk about in a moment. So clothing is definitely a big deal. Summertime, for instance, 
I know I'm wearing more layers. So therefore my entire carry option will change. Typically I'll go to something a little bit bigger, a little bit more, more not as big, <laughs> but maybe something like my Glock 19 uh, with the light and red dot option. Maybe that's what I would wear during the winter because I know I'll be wearing jackets and it's just in thicker clothing and more layers. So it'll be easier to actually conceal that. Versus summertime carry, I'm gonna want something a little bit more compact, like maybe the SIG P365, something that doesn't take up as much room, there's not as much surface area. And so therefore there's gonna be a little bit less printing that may occur. So little things like that, just to take into consideration. Have a carry gun for each season. Why not? This is America, take advantage of it. For my next mistake, my number three mistake that I see a lot of people commit, I guess you could say, not training, not practicing with their firearm and however they might have it set up. So kind of like when it comes to clothing, what I mentioned before is making sure that your clothing doesn't get snagged on your gun or your gun, gun snagged and whatever else. Making sure that your gun actually likes to feed the defensive ammunition that you might be running. For instance, some guns might be picky about that. So if you're running hollow points and your hollow points start to jam up quite a bit and you find that out, I don't know, in that life or death situation, that would kind of suck for you and well, you're not going to be having a good day or any days left after that moment. So, so practice is ultimately what I'm trying to say. Get out there and train. You got to figure this type of stuff out. You see in the videos that we try to run all these different types of drills. There's nothing that's going to really prepare us for that moment, right? There's nothing that's really going to prepare us, but I can tell you that my muscle memory, I can tell you that my reaction is going to come a little bit more natural than maybe to other people because I am always shooting. I'm always drawing. I'm always trying like, Hey, every now and then at the range, I was like, off camera, let's just run a couple of drills really quick and let's just get kind of broken in and let's just practice. So having more rounds down range or even dry fire, which I highly recommend, learning your equipment, learning your gear, learning what type of clothing works for you and doesn't, is gonna help save those seconds and maybe even less than seconds when that time counts. So get out there, train, practice, learn what works for you. That way you're not learning on the spot whenever that life or death situation presents itself. One in four people are typically um, in a situation, in a criminal situation where they are physically assaulted or attacked and some sort of crime is being committed on them. One in four. Most people think, oh, that's not going to be me. That's not going to happen. But when you've got millions of other people signing up for, I don't know, a Powerball, you never know. Let's be real. You're most likely going to be faced with some sort of situation in your life that a criminal is going to be doing something bad to you. Prepare for it. Get out there, practice, and train for it. How about uh, inadequate gear or <laughs> firearms or holsters for your concealed carry? The Desert Eagle is a pretty cool gun. Probably not one I would recommend for concealed carry. First of all, it's massive. Secondly, you've got a limited capacity with what, seven rounds? I mean, I thought we, I thought we were past this and you know, like, you know, back to back World War II champions and stuff like that. Like, come on, seven rounds is weak. Isn't that right, Eli? But uh, anyway, so make sure that you've actually got decent gear. Don't be afraid to spend money on things that's actually gonna, well, you know, maybe save your life one day. Granted, I understand everybody has a different type of budget. Somebody standing right next to me might not have the same budget as me, right? It just, it just makes sense. And I definitely don't have the largest budget in the world by any means, but I am able to actually test out a whole bunch of different product and I'm able to kind of, I guess you say, use what I think works for me. So check out all sorts of different things. Be out there, go out there and try to figure out what works best for you. And well, that also comes down to firearms. There's a reason why the SIG P365 is such a popular concealed carry gun. There's a reason why things like the Smith & Wesson MMP Shield is such a popular concealed carry gun. Glock, all these others, I mean, just, it keeps going on. But there's a reason why you keep kind of hearing these same names brought up over and over and over again. And it's like, well, maybe I should pay attention to that. Again, when it comes to my life, uh, it is an investment. I want this at the end of the day to protect me and save me when it comes down to it. Actually, that's up to me to protect myself and save myself. I want the tool I use doing that to work and operate as it should. So make sure you're utilizing adequate tools and equipment. Again, like I was talking about before, when it comes to your gear, make sure you've got a decent belt if you're gonna be concealed carrying inside the waistband. Maybe you're not wearing a belt, so check out like maybe the Felster uh, Enigma. It's a beltless 
holster design. Just, just check it out. It's really neat. Uh, again, Alpha Omega makes some great Kydex holsters if that's what you're looking for. Secret Squirrel, these, these different people that we've partnered with before, and they all make great products. Of course, there's going to be a difference here, a difference there, and you got to figure out what works best for you. And I understand, like I said before, budget becomes a thing. So, you know, trying to buy a bunch of holsters and that can get expensive might become problematic. But thankfully, there's this thing called the Internet, which you guys are currently on, that allows you to figure out all these different opinions, reviews and everything else and what might work best for you. Then you get it and you personally make up your own mind. You can say, you know what, this wasn't really it for me. I won't ever listen to that guy's opinion again. So be it. Sell it. Go try something else. Right. But get out there, practice and train. Make sure that you're utilizing adequate and quality gear and equipment and firearms, because at the end of the day, it's your life. How valuable is that to you? My number one thing I think I see a lot of people kind of screw up is their mindset. If your mindset isn't where it should be when it comes to carrying a firearm, then maybe you shouldn't carry a gun. Let's just be honest. If your entire idea is, well, to at some point in your life, get into a gunfight and that's all you want, Go seek help. And uh, the other thing is being prepared and ultimately ready for that evil when it comes knocking, as I've mentioned before, there's nothing wrong with that. Take your life, take your security and your defense and be accountable for it. Be responsible for you at the end of the day. And I know for a fact that if I'm ever faced with a situation, I'm not gonna be met unprepared, obviously. So just keep that in mind. This mindset that I'm talking about, having situational awareness, being observant, maybe not having too many drinks when you're out in public, this is the type of thing to think about because that makes you an easy target. You're vulnerable at that point in time. Is it a sense of paranoia? Mm, I don't think so. I think there's a really fine line there. Recognizing and knowing that evil exists and that evil will commit harmful acts to people of innocence, I don't think that's paranoia, that's reality. And we see that in the news every single day. What you also don't hear about is the numerous millions of lives saved. And yes, I am using the term millions of lives saved because there was somebody that was prepared, that had the correct mindset, that had the training, or at least were in the right spot at the right time that utilized something like this to put a threat to that thing called evil that I keep referring to. So have that right, right mindset. Be mindful of the laws, what you can and can't do. Be mindful of your physical fitness and being able to Use that escalation of force that I used that I talked about before. Be and have that mindset of like, okay, you know what? This is the clothing I'm going to go that I'm wearing today. I'm going to be concealed carrying this gun. Let me just go ahead and draw a couple times in the mirror to make sure nothing's snagged, nothing's nothing looks wrong. Having that type of mindset and then going out to society makes you ultimately, I think, a better person. Carry a gun, you become a better person. Am I wrong? Let me know down in the comment section below. But again, if you're going out looking for a fight, you're not the kind of person I want armed in society. If you're going out and looking to actually defend yourself and take responsibility of yourself and those that you care for in your own hands, you're the kind of person that I wouldn't mind eating next to at a restaurant. So let me know what you guys think all about my top five mistakes that I have seen for concealed carrying and maybe even some, definitely some, when I first started concealed carrying that I had in my head. Just go out there and grab your cheap, you know, <laughs> a uh, canvas holster and stick that in your pants and think, I got it, right? Or your little pocket holsters. Yeah, that might work for some of you, but not for me. Uh, and having that different mindset, kind of looking, right? Always always looking like, like okay, like that guy looks like he's, a, he's suspicious. I'm gonna keep my eye on him with my hand on my gun. You're, you might as well be open carrying at that point, right? You gotta be able to recognize a situation and either avoid it or intervene where you see fit. Like for instance, was it the Indianapolis or the Indiana uh, mall shooting? He intervened and he stopped the threat, if you ask me. And there's situations like that, as I've mentioned before, that have happened and that do happen almost every single day, but they're not as publicized, imagine that. Anyway, let me know if there are things that you wanna to add to the list or maybe you don't think as, is as important. Let me know some of the good things that you have practiced and seen perhaps in a concealed carry situation and maybe where lethal force was used and maybe not lethal. Maybe you somebody just drawing the gun calms somebody down really quick. It can go either way. Some people get really, really mad and it's like, how dare you pull a gun on me? Let's make this even worse. And some people sometimes say, you know what? Maybe I should drop this knife. I screwed up. Let's let's uh, let's calm down here. Just let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. And don't forget to head on over to classicfirearms.com to check out 
all these products that we have right here, uh, including free guns like uh, the SAR 9C, like the SIG P320 Spectre, and like this Glock 19 Gen 5 that you see right here, along with the Alpha Omega holsters that uh, is respectfully theirs. These are definitely the quality products that I was mentioning that I would use slash do use. So again, classicfarms.com to get your entries in on one or three of these pistols with again, their respective holster from Alpha Omega and uh, classicfarms.com. So if you haven't seen our Can Still Carry Loadout uh, series, then go check it out. Thanks to SAR USA for sponsoring the series and providing this little guy for the giveaway. We've got it teamed up with a Streamlight TLR7A, which I think is a fantastic uh, light for this for concealed carry or just good overall everyday carry. We do have the Glock 19 Gen 5 with the Delta Point by Leupold and also the Enforce light that you see right here. Nice. Surefire X300 Ultra on the SIG P320 Spectre with the SIG Romeo Red Dot right up top also. Very awesome gun. For concealed carry, it's a lot. I'll throw that out there. But is it impossible? No. Guess if you're mad, it works. But this is a fantastic pistol, shoots great, 10 out of 10 would recommend. So let me know what's your favorite of the concealed carry loadouts, what's your favorite concealed carry, and what are some of the other common mistakes that you see that you think should be identified and corrected by maybe those coming new into the concealed carry world. Let me know. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.